this is Kimberly from Lakeside Loops and today I'm going to show you how to make my Piper uh, wicker stitch pillow. Um, this stitch can also, uh, it also is called the crisscross stitch um, and sometimes the basket weave stitch. So lots of different names. Um, this is a knitting pattern and as with all of my patterns, you can find the full written instructions on my website, lakesideloops.com. The pattern is free and everything that you need in order to make this pillow is on the site. This video tutorial will cover any parts that you may have questions about, like how to do this stitch. Sometimes I think it's great to have that extra visual. So that's what this video tutorial will be. If you'd like, in addition to the free pattern that's on my website, you can also purchase a PDF so that you can download the pattern, save it, print it. You can find that on Etsy and Ravelry and the links are all on my website as well. For this pillow, I used Lion Brands Woolies Thick and Quick Yarn. I used a 10 or two 10 millimeter uh, knitting needles and you'll also need a darning needle. This pattern was actually featured in uh, an issue of Molly Makes Magazine uh, back in the spring, and I'm so excited to finally get to share the instructions with you today. All right, so this wicker stitch or crisscross or basket weave design is really beautiful, and it's actually pretty easy to work up as long as you know how to knit and how to purl. So I'm gonna show you how to use the knit stitch and the purl stitch to create this design. Um, within the written pattern on the website, you'll see that you need to cast on 45. I've just done a quick little sample size here so that we can do a quick, short and sweet video tutorial together. Um, so you will have cast on 45 and I've skipped ahead to sort of give you a little idea of what the design looks like. Um, but for your first row, so after you've cast on 45, you are going to slip one stitch onto your right needle knit wise. So as if you were going to knit it, but you don't knit it, you just slip it onto your needle. And then you're going to bring your yarn to the front and you're going to slip a second stitch onto your right needle as if you were going to purl it. So you're going to go into the stitch this way and slip it onto your needle. Then you're going to bring your yarn back to the back and we're going to be working in groups of two. So working from the back, you're going to knit the second stitch. Oops. So my yarn is here. I'm going to insert my needle into that second stitch and I'm going to knit it. And I'm going to keep this stitch on my needle. I'm not going to slide it off because this one is in the way. We're going to come around the front and we're going to knit that first stitch. Now you can slide both those stitches off of your left needle. All right, so again, we're working in groups of two. So we're going to be working with these two stitches and we're going to knit the second stitch first. So again, from the back, insert your needle, grab that yarn and knit that second stitch. Now we're going to knit the first stitch that we skipped and then you're gonna slide both of those stitches off of your left needle. And you're just gonna to continue to do that until you only have one stitch left in your row. All right, so I've skipped ahead to the end of my row and we just knit this last stitch. For both row one and row two, your last stitch is a knit stitch. All right, now row two is even easier than row one. So we're just gonna flip our work around here. And for row two, you are going to start by slipping two stitches, one, two, purl wise, so inserting your needle this way, onto your right needle. So one, two. Now you're gonna bring your yarn to the front. And again, we're working in pairs. So we're gonna be working on these first two stitches. You're gonna purl the second stitch and then purl the first stitch. So. There's one, oh gosh, one stitch purled, and now purling that second stitch, and now we're going to slide both those stitches off of our left needle. So again, purl the second stitch, and then purl the first stitch. 
and then slide, you can see those two stitches, slide both those stitches off of your needle. And so you're just gonna continue doing that until you only have one stitch left on your left needle. All right, so I've skipped ahead again here and I just have one stitch left. And again, we just knit that last stitch. So that is the end of row three. This is what the back or the wrong side of your pillow cover will look like. And this is what the right side will look like. And you are just going to repeat uh, row one and, sorry, that was the end of row two. <laughs> Gosh, you're just gonna repeat row one and row two uh, until you've completed 41 rows. All right, once you've completed your basket weave or wicker stitch or crisscross stitch front panel, you're going to create two back sections. And these are going to overlap and they're just in stockinette, which is just knitting on one side and purl on the other. Um, they're very easy to work up. The stitch count's a little bit different, as you'll see uh, in the written pattern. Uh, you cast on 32 stitches um, because the stockinette is a little bit wider. It takes up a little more space than the crisscross because they're crisscrossing. Um, it sort of tightens it. So once you've worked that up, you're going to lay everything down and seam it together. So you wanna lay down your crisscross or basket weave section with the crisscross facing up. And then you want to lay these two back panels overlapping one another with the stockinette facing down. So you've got your wrong side facing up and this wrong side. The wrong side's facing out, the right side's facing in. And you've got this overlapped so that it lines up on the end with your front panel and then overlaps in the middle with one another. And that's going to create a little envelope pocket for us to put our pillow insert into. So once you've got it all lined up, you can pin it if you'd like, and you're just going to stitch all the way around the outside of your square. And then all you need to do is turn it right side out like so, and insert your pillow insert, and your pillow is complete. I really hope that this video tutorial helped with any questions that you may have had. If you're still unsure about how to work this up, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I'm always wanting to help if I can, uh, and I can't wait to see your pillow. So if you post any pictures online, I'd love for you to tag me at Lakeside Loops so I can see your finished piece.